These are the Rocket Cone Pures. The one on the left, the Desert Strike, is the optical, and the one on the right is the laser. I wouldn't recommend getting these mice in different colors unless you're setting up your desktop that way. This was just really cheap, so I thought, why not buy it? But otherwise, definitely try to get the black version. So first up, both of these mice, really solid. You can just tell they're a quality product, which we're coming to expect from Ruckout. And that's also why they're quite highly priced. All the buttons are amazing. They all just feel really good. Again, high quality product. You have the side buttons for the thumb, left and right, DPI up and down, scroll wheel, and then nothing on the other side. The scroll wheels are actually some of the best I've ever used. Have a listen. Almost nothing in it. I have seen some people talk about the rifling sensors in these, and they say to return them straight away. I hope the one that I get as a replacement is not going to have that. It might actually be a common feature on these, which is going to be really bad. Otherwise, they're very well built, just this one has a very slight rattle and this one has a noticeable rattle. They're RGB mice, these are the only places that you will get the RGB lights. The cables are fairly stiff but braided, they seem like they're high quality, they're very smooth, they don't seem to rub on the pad too much, but I think I still prefer the rubber plasticky cable that you get on say the Rival 100 or the Zowie EC2A. The mouse feet are some of the quietest. This Rockout Tato pad is a bit louder than my Goliathus. But even on this, they're almost silent. Here's the size comparison with the Death Adder. I actually thought these mice were going to be bigger, but they turned out to be quite small. So the appearance is an illusion. They're closer to the G303 than the Death Adder. The reason these mice feel a bit smaller is actually a bit of a trick. And it's because of the base. You notice that it's a really weird shape you kind of actually have to measure from there to there, and it's only about 5.5 centimeters. So this is a mid-range mouse, I would call it a medium size, although due to the shape on top, it's actually going to feel a different size again. When it comes to grips, I think this works best for claw grip. It would work for fingertip, and it doesn't quite work for palm for my size hand. So I am a bit uncomfortable, but it's not too bad. I actually quite enjoy playing with this. So you have plenty of room. It's a fairly safe shape. Although, because they've got the thumb groove on this side, it does dictate where you put your thumb a little bit. And that's part of why it might be a little bit uncomfortable. If they just straighten that edge out, it might be a bit more comfortable for palm grippers as well. I find that you could probably rest your thumb there too, I mean, if you really want to. Unfortunately, Rocket still haven't given us grooves in the bottoms. They're just sort of flat. I mean, they're a bit rounded, but in the wrong way. They're curving over instead of under to actually give your finger a place to rest. Still, it's not uncomfortable, and this texture on top really is amazing. Once you've held this mouse, you'll wonder why they don't put this on all of them. I'm a bit worried about durability, and it might be a bit slippery to some, but I really like this texture, and I just love holding this mouse for the texture. Unfortunately, these ones don't have that. It's more of a harder shell. It's slightly rubberized, but nowhere near the velvety smooth, whatever that is. It's amazing. On the sides, I feel the same, but the black material here seems to be just a tiny bit smoother. Still, they're both rubberized and really, really nice. I'll go into more detail about the sensors later. The laser did have a slight jitter to it, whereas the optical was performing quite well. Still, that's a good performance. I wouldn't worry about that slight jitter. And I played a fair few hours with this mouse and I was aiming quite well. So really not an issue, just something to be aware of. Let's just do some rocket jumping. This is with the optical. I've already tested these and I couldn't find a problem. So even with fast flicks, oops, they perform quite well. I've been hitting that doorway a lot lately. Must be because I'm changing mice, right? Yeah, I will say that. There we go. So great sensor in this. I've got it set at 3200 DPI as usual, and feels good. Now the same test with the laser, and again, no problem rocket jumping. You can get around the map nice and easily. I don't fear the sensor spinning out, and that's the main thing. So good quality sensors, laser and optical, I'm not seeing a problem here at all. I did some acceleration tests earlier, so if I just went full 360 all the way around and then did it really quickly, I wouldn't go any further. So I eventually got back to this exact spot on both mice. So no acceleration, you can set that inside the software if you want to, but otherwise it's off by default. 
In the software, you do have the easy shift option, so when you hold down a button, you can make all the other buttons do something else. Really cool feature of Rock Out Mice and keyboards. You have the advanced control. One thing, make sure you uncheck all these sound feedbacks, otherwise when you do those things, it'll actually tell you by voice. It's got angle snapping, it's actually got a lot of control. The color control, all you can do is fully lit breathing or lighting off. There's no color cycling or anything like that. It does give you RGB options though, so pick any color you want. You can set 5 DPI stages. The laser goes from 200 DPI all the way to 8200. And the optical sensor goes from 100 to 5000. Just a word of warning, every time you hit apply in these settings, it'll take about 30 seconds to write all the configuration to the mouse again. For some reason it does that in Windows, but not Linux. Linux driver is actually instant, so I don't know what's going on, but I hope they fix that in future versions. The good news is that you don't apply new settings too often. It's usually just when you're changing color and trying to get the color right that you go through it about three or four times, and that's two minutes of your time wasted just waiting for this to change. Okay, some gameplay with these mice. You'll see that a grenade placement can go a long way. Bounce straight off the wall into that guy's face. Beautiful stuff. Missed a few rails, but I was pretty confident with the aim and quite comfortable using the mouse all together. And when people were coming at me, I wasn't showing away. I knew I could hit them, unlike, say, with the death adder, which is too wide for me. And I'll probably just miss them continually and try to run away. But I hit a lot of rails with this mouse. And even tight shots. I was trying even super tight shots really stupidly. And check that out, double row right there, always good fun. So basically, I felt solid using these mice. The gameplay was good, and I would be more than happy to use these continually, but I still think the better mouse is the Zowie EC2A. Just for comfort wise, I think it will suit a lot more people's hands. While the right side of the mouse is a safe shape, the rest of the mouse is not so safe, because it does you know, force your thumb to be in a certain spot. And it just feels smaller than it actually is. It's a really strange mouse, but I must say I do like it. I just really want to caution everyone that it's not going to be for you all. Some people will love it, other people will hate it. So it really depends on what you like. So in conclusion, the first thing that stands out with these are the textures and materials. They're high quality, well designed. They do have some slight issues like the sensor rattling on some and the sensors aren't perfect, but overall they're just a solid mouse and it really depends on whether or not you're going to enjoy that sort of shape if you actually want to buy it or not. Personally, I quite like them and I know other people like them too, but again, it's really up to you. I don't want to recommend this mouse to many people because of the shape. And I know I said I'd go into the sensors in more detail later and that's going to be another video. I'm going to compare the sensors in a separate video because I'm going to go in depth. So subscribe for that and many other reviews and videos coming soon. Like this video to help it come up in search results. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Until then, I'll catch you in the next video.